general question everyone has is, does your Tesla need to be tinted? I'm back at Alan's new shop over at Extreme Edge Auto Detail to get the Cybertruck tinted or not tinted and actually show you if it works or not. But this time I wanted to do some actual scientific testing. I should stop eating my scientific testing device. Now Tesla does a great job of making their glass perfect, but the glass on the Cybertruck is different than any other Tesla as it's the strongest one on the market today. It may not stop a bullet, but it is very durable. I just saw a video of someone trying to break into a Tesla and I don't know if they were a noob or something, but they were able to only crack the glass and not shatter it even with those shattering glass devices, which is crazy. So the rear glass of all Teslas are factory dyed, so it does offer some privacy and according to Tesla, their glass keeps out 99% of UV rays. The cool thing is with the Tesla Cybertruck, they not only offer UV protection, but infrared protection as well. And you can definitely tell the way the glass looks, there's an added layer on there. So it gives more of a shiny finish. However, we'll see what happens on how much heat it rejects after tinting. UV rays is pretty much what causes cancer and damages your interior. But as far as heat rejection goes, it's not the best. Which is why I recommend some sort of ceramic tint on your Tesla windows. And also the benefit with tint is it helps prevent people from looking into your car to find something to steal. So with the Tesla Cybertruck, they did a great job with the soundproofing. Both the front and the rears are dual pane glass. As you can see, the front is crystal clear. As far as the rears, it is factory dyed. However, in the sun, you can still see people inside, especially when it's sunny. And that's the beauty with ceramic tint. The light reflects off the ceramic tint to help decrease heat as well as bring light into the cabin. So we're gonna be testing out the glass just to see if Tesla's true, if it is 99% UV rejection, as well as to see how much infrared heat it rejects. I got this handy dandy meter here. Visual light transmissions is VLT. So that's how much light can enter. So that kind of shows us what our tint percentage is, as well as UVR ultraviolet radiation and it should be at 99% because of the test glass. And lastly, IRR, which is infrared rejection. Now, there's two different terms. There's like total solar TSER versus IRR. Very technical. Just know that the higher percentage it is, the better, because that's how much heat it rejects from bouncing off into the interior of the cabin. So now we're just gonna place this on here. So with the Tesla glass, it's pretty much 79 or 80% visual light transmission. So it's like 80% tint. So it is slightly tinted, but not that much. So. I didn't realize that. I do see a tint difference. If you look over here, you can kind of see there is a difference in the tint. So this is 80% tinted, 100% UV rejection. So it definitely rejects UV radiation. And IR rejection is actually pretty good, 78.7, .7, so almost 79%. So it does seem to do a pretty decent job at rejecting heat. However, like I said before, we're gonna do more scientific testing soon and really, really see if it actually rejects heat better. Let's go ahead and test the rear doors. The rears offers 23.2 light transmission, so around, I'd say it's like a 20% tint, 100% UV rejection, and 92.4% infrared heat rejection. So that's actually pretty good, but let's see what difference it makes when you actually put tint on top of that. So now we have a Tesla Model Y. So it's tinted with Expel Ceramic Tint 35%. We just got our tint measure here. We're just gonna measure it real quick. That's crazy. So 37.2 visual light transmission. So it's off by like maybe 2%, so not too bad. 100% UV rejection, 99% infrared heat rejection. It's a huge step above the Tesla factory glass as it definitely rejects more infrared heat. So let's try the back windows, man. The back windows, this is a dark one. As you can see, you can't see anything. See all that light reflecting off of the window? That's because they had the ceramic tint applied on top of the factory tint. And already you see the difference. 11% VLT, visual light transmission. So I, I say this is like a 10% tint right here. 100% UVR and infrared 99.6. So now we're gonna test out some popular percentages on the Tesla Cybertruck factory glass. And again with Teslas, I mean, you're driving on road trips, you spend most of your time in your car, so you should definitely get the best tint possible. And the beauty with Expel is it comes with a lifetime warranty, no bubbling, and I love the look of the Expel as well. It's not like a greenish hue. Some of them have like weird colors. However, this is like a true black color. It looks amazing. All right, so now we got some tint installed on the Tesla factory glass in the front. Now, this is 70%, 15%, and 5%. Already, you can see the difference. Now, this is pretty much clear. This is what I recommend on people's windshields. Now, depending on what state you live in, it's illegal to tint your windshield. However, if it's clear enough, police officers won't really tell. However, do it at your own risk. Don't come to me if you guys get a ticket. On my Tesla Model Y and on my Tesla Model X, we have 70% tint. This is what it looks like here. 15% is what I recommend going for, and it's this piece right here. As you can see, it's definitely a little bit darker, and it looks good. This is 5%. 
Now for me on the Cybertruck, usually with all glass, whenever I do my rear glass, which is the back, I usually always tint it the darkest because I don't need to look out, it's totally fine, and I want the most heat rejection possible. If you come over here on this side, you'll see what I mean when I say the ceramic tint reflects a lot of light. Again, we have 70% here. You can kind of see the reflection here. This is not tinted at all, so not that much reflection. 15%, look at this, it's like a mirror but 5% is like a mirror mirror. So that's why at nighttime, if you have any sort of interior lighting or any sort of light coming in from the windshield, it bounces off and then you can't see out at all because you're just looking at yourself in the mirror, which is why I don't recommend 5% in the front if possible, up to you, personal preference. Let's see how hot it feels. Got my infrared bulb here, it feels so nice. It's kind of chilly in here. We're gonna use my laser gun to see the temperature. Holy 213 degrees, <laughs> giving me around 213 degrees Fahrenheit. So now we're gonna be placing it on the 70% one. I got Alan to help me. And we're gonna see if I can feel the heat. So no heat yet, feels good. It's giving me around 67 degrees, but I don't feel any heat on 70%. Now I'm starting to feel a little bit. Now I know what you're thinking, this isn't scientific at all. Don't worry, I got some, my chocolate, it's coming soon. So if we were to go right in this middle right here, see I already feel the heat right now. I feel it right away. 72.8, so definitely went up immediately when we put that onto the non-treated glass. So now we're gonna go up to the 15%, 66 degrees. I don't feel anything. If you leave a car in the sun for an extended period of time, no tint is gonna prevent the interior from getting hot. So it's more so like when you put your hand against it, how long does it take for that heat to, to penetrate into the interior of the cabin? Now I'm starting to feel it slightly. 85 degrees, so yeah, definitely going up a little bit. Now we're gonna try 5%. 66 degrees on this side, 69, 71. Yeah, I don't feel it, now I'm like nothing. Still nothing. So I don't know how long we're gonna have to wait here. I don't want my boy Alan to hurt his arm. 83 degrees. As you can see, it definitely increases the temperature of the interior, however, it's much slower. And again, we're looking for that total heat rejection, which is perfect. Now we're gonna test out the windshield. How well does it does at rejecting heat? This is the factory tint, no aftermarket tint or anything. Here's my scientific device. We have a glass Tupperware, we have my chocolate. Right now the chocolate temperature is giving me around 60 degrees. So let's go ahead and place it on the dashboard. Now the AC's off, the windows are open to kind of keep it like the ambient temperature. Just to measure the interior right there. I'm getting around 64.5 degrees. And then we're gonna just see how long it takes for the Hershey's to start melting. Okay, we're gonna place it on here. We're gonna hit start. Okay, so we got that going. Let's measure the heat real quick. It's already increasing at 61.7 degrees. It's already going up 63.5. And the glass is at 65.6. So it's definitely going up. So let's just see. All right, so it's been about seven minutes. Let's do a quick check, because this is taking forever. I'm gonna be here all day. The hottest piece of the chocolate's getting me 78 degrees. So it is getting hotter. 80 5.2. All right, so it's been about 26 minutes. So this is my first time trying this type of test. So I messed up. The bulb kept moving. So 26 minutes in, let's do a quick test. 104 degrees at the top. So I touched it and it was melting for sure. I was like, this is the strongest chocolate I've ever gotten. But it's definitely melting. It smells like chocolate in here. It took around 26 minutes for it to actually start melting. You can actually see it starting to cave in a little bit right there. 106 degrees. So we're gonna wait till 30 minutes and we're gonna try 15% tint just to see how much different it makes but overall it seems like the factory tint is pretty good especially the roof because it has that infrared heat rejection as well and that extra film here is the chocolate mm, look how yummy this is you guys want some all right so same thing now we got 15 percent expelled tint on the windshield the chocolate we're getting a reading of 63.1 degrees so right now the temperature is giving me 75 degrees it is a little bit warmer because i was doing a test for 30 minutes before so it's a slightly warmer so while we wait for our chocolate to melt i just wanted to show you guys how the tint really affects it with these halogen bulbs here expel has a nice little display so let's go and measure it with the light off 64.4 degrees we're gonna turn it on i feel the heat already i'm so blind 161 degrees so now we're gonna try XR Plus. So Expel has different lines. Their most expensive is XR Plus, which is their full ceramic line, the best one. They have different versions, like their CS Black. So CS Black, I'm getting 145 degrees. XR Black, wow, 81 degrees. And their XR Plus, which is the best one, 66 degrees, 67 degrees. Yeah, I don't feel any heat. Why did I have to do that chocolate test? I could've just done this right here. All right, so it's been 28 minutes, over 28 minutes. I'm getting around 93 degrees. So about the same time as the untreated windshield. Let's take a look. So definitely hot and I could still feel that, but it's not melted. So on this side, we have 15% Expel Prime XR ceramic tint with the infrared bulb here. On this side, we have no tint, 
and this is both around the 28 minute mark. As you can see, the chocolate completely melted on this side. However, this side you can see it's almost starting to melt, but it does take a lot longer to heat up. So that just shows you that it actually does work. So that's awesome. Let's go ahead and tint this bad boy. So how long is this bad boy? 68 inches. Mm -hmm. So this is like the biggest windshield Tesla's ever created with the Cybertruck. It's just huge piece of glass. It goes all the way straight up here. So 68 by 68. Do we need to roll that big? <laughs> that's insane. That's so big. Uh-oh. So what? Ran into some technical difficulties here. Okay, yeah, so it is possible. Right on the dot. Right on the dot. You have like one inch to spare, but it shrinks too, so it has to be perfect. So. So finally, the Cybertruck is tinted. All the glass is tinted. So we did 70% in the windshield. We did 15% in the front. We did 5% in the rear glass. And for the roof, we also did 70%. That way, I can still see out. But man, it is sexy. It was pretty crazy how they did the installation. He removed the entire housing. I was so scared. He did a great job, though, and he was able to do it no problems. As far as cost goes, it is a little bit more expensive to do the windshield on the Cybertruck than, say, a Model X. However, totally worth it. If you guys are in the OC area, you need your car tinted, especially your Cybertruck tinted, make sure to go to Alan and Leo over at Extreme Edge. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.